Hi everyone! Today we are going to implement an RTS camera controller in the Godot game engine. The controller allows the player to move the camera around using the keyboard, pan the camera and rotate it using the mouse, zooming in and out toward the mouse cursor, and as a bonus we are going to implement locking the camera movement and jumping to specific locations using signals. There are timestamps in the description along with links to the code on GitHub so that you can simply use the code as is. Let's get started. I've opened a new project called RTS Camera Controller. I've set up the files the way I like to set it up. I use one folder called source for all my scenes and scripts and I use another folder called assets for any assets that I'm using including fonts, music and images. We are going to create the base node of our scene. We are going to call it main. We are going to add one spatial node as a child of main and we are going to call it world all 3D objects in our project are going to be children of the world node. We are going to add another child node. We are going to call it scene. All the objects that are used to represent our scene are going to be children of this node. I've created some basic objects so that we can add them and have the camera look at them, but you can add any object you want just to make the camera movement be more apparent. We're going to save this scene and we're going to make sure that it is the main scene that is going to run every time we press run. We are now going to start working on our camera. Our camera is going to be comprised of three nodes. The first one is going to be again a spatial node called RTS Camera Controller. The second one is going to be called Elevation. And the last one is going to be a camera node. I'm going to now switch to a preview so that we can understand why we set up our scene like that. Now many of the camera attributes that we are trying to control are being controlled by a single value that is easy to manipulate. For example, the zoom can be controlled by changing the Z value of just the camera node. So as you can see with the camera node chosen I went to transform and now whenever I move on the z-axis I zoom in and out. If I want to change the elevation I can choose the elevation node, go to its transform and by just rotating around the x-axis my camera moves up and down, which is going to make a lot of our calculations very simple. The last thing is by choosing the RTS camera controller, we can move around using the translation of only that node and also rotate. We are going to still need to solve the problem that after this rotation, if we try to just change the translation naively, we are not going to move forward in the camera space. So what we are going to do is use the relative basis of the parent node to move backward and forward. But all of this is going to be done in code and we are going to go into much more details. Let's for now reset all properties to their original values.
and start doing all these changes with the code. We are going to start by implementing movement with the keyboard. I've already added to the input map four inputs called camera forward, camera backward, camera left and camera right and I chose the key scheme of WASD. We are going to attach a script to our RTS camera controller. We are going to make it inherit from spatial. We are going to use the template empty. It is going to be named RTS camera controller just like our node. The first parameter we are going to expose to our user using export params is going to be the camera movement speed. It is going to be a float, it is going to have a minimum value of 0 and we are going to set a maximum value of 1000 which is supposed to be some large number that we don't expect our user to ever choose. We are going to call this movement speed and we are going to scale our velocity vector by this movement speed so that we can increase and decrease the speed the camera moves from the editor. We are going to override all, all our functions here so we are going to make another title for this part of the code and we are going to call it override function. The first function we are going to override is the process function. Our process function is going to call each of the movement functions every time the scene updates. The first one is going to be move and is going to get delta as a parameter. We are now going to implement the move function. So move is going to be a private function which gets delta as a parameter and returns nothing. Move is going to work like this. We are first going to initialize a velocity vector. We are going to populate it based on the user input and we are then going to translate our camera based on that velocity. So the easier parts are initializing the vector so var velocity is going to be an empty vector 3 and the last part of the function is going to be taking the translation adding the velocity scaling it by both delta and our movement speed. We are now going to based on the user input change the velocity. So the first thing we are going to test is the user is trying to move forward. So if input is action pressed camera forward we are going to write this part of code and don't worry if you don't fully understand it it is going to work and uh, it is using some property called uh, the object's basis and uh, with some knowledge of linear algebra uh, the concept of basis is very easy if any of you want me to make a video uh, describing how basis work um, just let me know in the comments so we're going to take our velocity vector and we are going to remove from it the z vector from the from uh, the object basis to move backward we are simply going to instead of subtracting the z basis we're going to edit now in order to implement moving to the right and to the left we can copy this code here change camera forward to camera left camera backward to camera right 
and instead of using the Z bases we're going to use the X bases. The last thing we need to do is scale our velocity vector to be a unit vector which means it has a length of 1 so we're just going to you to do velocity equals velocity dot normalized we're now going to move to our 3d scene and we are just going to move the camera slightly backward let's say negative 10 sorry 10 and we're going to rotate the elevation node um, so that the camera is going to look at the, the scene from above I'm going to use negative 45 and uh, we just make sure that movement speed has some positive value let's say 20 and now when we run by pressing A and D I'm moving left and right by pressing W and S I move backward and forward and I can use any combination of those keys to move around the scene and the movement seems to be working. We can scale the speed, make it slower or faster from the editor itself. But I think 20 was a good speed. And that is all for this video. In the next one, we are going to implement rotation and zoom. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I will answer. See you next time. Goodbye.